Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa. This is Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be talking through everything I made in the month of January. This video is a little bit delayed because I ended up getting sick at the beginning of February with COVID. I was basically out of commission for a couple of weeks and it has been slow going to get back on track. There was so much I made in the month of January. It was a super productive month for me. I think it's a combination of it's a bit of a longer month. I also had some annual leave, so I had some time off in the middle of the month. But I think I was just feeling really excited and inspired to get some stuff sewn up. And I have some really cool things I cannot wait to show you guys. As ever, there are chapters down below. So if you're not interested in a particular project, just skip ahead or skip to what you do want to hear about. But I've got so much to share. I am just going to get on with it. I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. This is the NYX dress by Closet Core Patterns. It is one that I actually had the fabric first and then worked backwards to what dress I wanted to make with the fabric. I'm usually the other way around. I usually find a pattern and then I find the fabric that's perfect for it. This all came because this was the lining fabric that I actually used on my Heather blazer that I made last year. So I made a Heather blazer by Friday, pa Friday Pattern Company last year in a really beautiful linen blend fabric. And I chose this to be the lining. It's a viscose twill fabric. Fabric. It's actually a Zara X designer fabric with these really beautiful sunflowers on it. Hopefully you can get a bit of an idea of what the fabric looks like, but it's a viscose twill so it has a decent weight to it. It's not too light, but it's still really nice and soft and drapey like you would expect from a viscose fabric. So this fabric, like I said, I used it on the blazer. I loved using it in the blazer. It sews up really well, it handles really well, and I thought, ooh, this would actually be really good for a dress. And I had this idea of having a dress that would match the blazer, and I really wanted something with a lot of gathers. I wanted some kind of drapiness. I want it to be quite full and floaty and flowy. I bought this fabric from the Somi Sunshine Open Day last year, and I think it was October. I got a few things I'm going to be talking about that. I think it was October. And when I bought the fabric, I knew that was the general thing that I wanted to do with it. I think I bought four meters at the time, thinking that would be enough for a floaty dress. And then very soon after, this dress was released by Closet Core Patterns. And as soon as I saw it, I was like that's the dress I had in mind. Like it wasn't literally because I didn't know it existed, but that was very much the kind of style that I was hoping for. And I decided I needed to just buy a little bit more fabric because this is a very fabric hungry pattern. I've had a few people asking me, do you need as much fabric as it says? Because it's about five meters of fabric that you need. And I mean, it may well be that your fabric is just extra wide and wider than 150 centimeters. Mine was actually a little bit narrower than that. And I definitely used the full length of the fabric. I even had to piece together some of the tiers to get enough out of it. Now, if you are someone who just has this great fabric in your stash that you think would work really well for it, but you don't have the full five meters, of course, you can still make this dress, but it's not, not going to be exactly the same. You're going to have to compromise on some of the design elements, maybe not have quite so much fullness at the bottom of the dress. But to be honest, this dress as it is was really how I wanted it. And I'm so happy that I made it as is and I got the extra fabric and I was able to make it up. So this dress is Gather City. There is just gathers everywhere. I really love when a pattern is very cohesive in that way and you've got design elements that you can see throughout different parts of the garment. So there is a yoke here. It's sort of a front to back yoke. There's some gathers under the front of the yoke. There's gathers underneath the back of the yoke as well. There are gathers here on the sleeves. It's actually an elastic waist cuff, which I really like. There's gathers at the waist because there's a, an elastic channel there as well. And there are two more tiers to the skirt that are gathered in. So it feels really lovely and feminine and delicate. Because there are so many tiers gathered on, there's like three sections to this skirt, and each section is one and a half times wider than the previous, by the time you get to the bottom, it is wide. I need to actually measure how wide the bottom of this skirt is, and I'll pop it up on the screen just for my own amusement, but it is full. It is fabulous. I will say wearing it, it moves and it swishes in the most delightful way. I do have to be careful getting in and out of the car because it's a lot of skirt to bring along with me, but I really do love the fullness that you get on this. I love the length that it is for me as well. So I wasn't quite sure if it was supposed to be more of a midi or a maxi. It's kind of in between and I am the height that they supposedly draft for. I am five foot six. This is supposedly drafted for five foot six. 
I mean, theoretically, you could probably just extend it to be a full maxi, but I think that it would maybe just get that little bit more in the way. And the height where it is, I feel like it then works well. I mean, certainly I'll be able to wear it in the summer with sandals, but I think it would also, it has been working well with boots as well. I feel like it makes a little bit more of a kind of adaptable, wearable garment. And I have loved wearing it when I've been wearing it. For a long while, I've been really wanting a long sleeve dress that I can wear in the winter. I love viscose, I love viscose dresses, but they're not usually very warm. But when I made my Heather blazer, I found that because this is a viscose twill, it's not like a viscose chalet, it has a reasonable weight to it, reasonable body to it. It was warmer than I expected, and I felt like it would work really well for me to be able to have something that I can wear kind of throughout all of the seasons. And I do think that I ended up with what I had wanted. As far as the instructions with closet core patterns, in all honesty, I can't really say there was too many issues. It's usually, they're usually pretty good and this one really was the same. I will say there was one design element that I didn't particularly understand and it's on the sleeve. There are some pleats on the sleeve. I'm looking, you might be able to see me looking because I feel like I can't even see where they are. It looks like they're kind of on the side here you probably literally won't even be able to tell because if I pull it out, you can see, but because you have the elastic gathering, it just makes it look gathered anyway. Now I know that this is a lightweight and drapey fabric, and so maybe that's not helping the situation, that it was always just gonna kind of flop over itself a bit more. And maybe if I had more like a cotton lawn fabric or a cotton poplin, maybe it would be a little bit more obvious to have those pleats there. I'm not entirely sure I understand the function of them. I wondered if it might make them seem a bit less bulky somehow and maybe make it a little bit easier to get the sleeves into coats and things like that, but I'm not sure I would bother with the pleats on there in the future. I'd be really interested to hear if anyone else has made this and you did put the pleats on there, or if you can even just fathom what you think the pleats are for. Do you find them useful? Do you find them to be visible? Do you find them to make a difference in any way on the garment? It just feels like an unnecessary extra step, if I'm honest with you. But apart from that, the whole thing came together really, really well. So there's a beautiful overall finish on this, as you often get with closet core patterns. I'm not, you know, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just a bit of a fangirl. I really do like their patterns and their instructions. So this yoke part, the yoke detail that you have at the top of the dress is put in with the burrito method. So you have all the seams fully enclosed there. There is also a bias strip or bias strips that go around the inside of the front of the neckline. So you have a really nice, neat finish in there. Just a little side note, because this is a twill fabric, there is a twill weave, which is in a diagonal, which is essentially like lines going down the bias. And so when I cut the bias strips, it looked like the strips were on grain because it was going along parallel with the twill weave, which was, it like took me a minute to figure out like, wait, this is definitely the bias, but it looks like it's on grain. It threw my brain. It was, I don't know, it's probably not the first time that I've cut bias out of a twill fabric. Maybe it is. Anyway, that was just a funny side note that amused me as I was making it. But like I said, really beautiful finish to the bodice, which is what you construct first. And I felt like the inside of the bodice looked so lovely and neat with no visible seams. Everything was enclosed really well. I thought, you know what? This dress deserves French seams so that I can enclose all of the seams. Just, you know, to make it cohesive yet again. And I'm so glad that I did it. I mean, yes, it was extra work. I generally don't find it to be too bad for like a bodice and the sleeves, even setting sleeves, I don't find them too bad with the um, French seams, which is what I would have expected before I did it. It sounded like a crazy thing to do, but it actually works quite easily, just not very different from normally sewing your sleeves in. But I will say the gathered tiers of this skirt, I did start to question my choices as I was getting particularly to that bottom tier, which is a lot of fabric. Each of these three tier sections had two rows of basting stitches. They were then gathered together and then sewed together, wrong sides together, flipped round, and then sewn right sides together to get the French seams there. It was a lot of stitching, guys. I mean, I knew, I'm, I'm, I've done French seams before, I've done gathers before, I knew that I was setting myself up for more of a slow sewing project. And I embraced it, you know? I didn't want to whiz through this project. I wanted to have a nice, neat finish. When I then got to the hem, of course, that I had to turn up and stitch down, it was, it was a lot of sewing on this one. I used a lot of thread, and this was definitely one as well where I kept finding odd pieces of thread as I was wearing the dress. 
I thought I took out all of my basting stitches, but of course when you're trying to take them out, they sometimes break, and then I would just find an odd thread. I wouldn't be surprised if I still find some the next time I'm wearing this dress, but it was worth taking all the time to get it right. As far as the bodice section, it is like a button-up bodice section, but it's actually a faux button-up. You don't need to have these buttons functional because this dress, if you haven't gathered, if you haven't seen, no pun on gather intended, um, it is massive. So this is how big the skirt section or the, the bodice section is. There is a lot of room around this area, and so you can easily pull this up and off and over your head. Now these buttons, I really do love the buttons that I got. I got these from what's it called? Textile Garden. One of my favorite places to get buttons, probably my favorite place to get buttons in the UK. They are such a gorgeous button. So they're shank buttons. They're a really lovely enamel that's like got a nice shiny coating on the top and this gold backing. And I feel like it just, they pop so well on this dress. I feel like they are a perfect pairing. I was so excited when I found these buttons and they arrived and they were just absolutely perfect. So they're a shank button and then you create rouleau loops to create button loops that go down the center. And the two sections of the front bodice actually butt up against each other. They don't overlap. And you can just leave it like that, but because the buttons are not functional, they do give you the option of actually hand sewing, slip stitching the front sections of the bodice here together which I really liked because I don't want to have any little anything poking and peeking out when I don't mean for it to. If you're bending over, moving, sometimes, you know, elements might be peeking and gaping. So I was really glad that they said that that was an option. I might have ended up doing it myself anyway, but I appreciate that they think about those things with closet core. I'm not afraid of a bit of hand sewing. I actually embrace a little bit of hand sewing on a project. So I feel like, again, it was just a really nice, neat finish and it brought it together very well. As far as the sizing, I think a lot of people have made this dress and talked about how oversized it is. That is the idea. It's meant to be oversized and floaty and loose and drapey. If that's not your style, then it might not be the dress for you. I really love the idea of just kind of floating around in this gorgeous dress with all the lovely fabric floating around me. So for me, it's great. I did not make the size recommended though, so I ended up sizing down one size. So if I was gonna be looking at just what the finished garment measurements were for my full bust, that would have put me in a size 12, but I made a size 10, which is more in line with my high bust measurement. For me, I actually have a five inch difference between my high bust and my full bust. This pattern is designed for something with a two inch difference between the high and the full bust. I will say, I think I could have sized down even one more size and gone down to a size eight, which is what I think I'll probably do in the future. Because like I said, I have so much excess. So I decided not to bother with a full bust adjustment because I could see how much ease there was in the bust area. I knew that width ways, I was gonna have plenty of space. But what I didn't think about, and what I often forget, is that my bust doesn't just take up fabric this way. It also takes up fabric in this direction. So I ended up, I think, with a little bit of a too short section at the front of the bodice. The end result is that you are meant to have this kind of blousing effect as the fabric drapes over itself at the waist, at the elastic waist, which I really like. But the front for me doesn't blouse over as much as the rest of it, of the sides and the back. And so that's the only thing that was kind of let me down with the fact that I didn't make a muslin. I didn't do a full bust adjustment. I think in the future, I don't think I would bother. There are darts in this. I don't, th are there darts? It's so difficult when you have a viscose and a really patterned fabric. I don't think there are darts in this, but I don't think they needed it for me. I think I just need to add some length and I'll be interested to see what happens if I size down, just add a bit of length and if I feel happier with the fit. Don't think that I'm not happy with this one as it is, guys, honestly. I really do love this dress. It's been so much fun to wear just on its own. It is super fun when I pair it with the blazer that I made to match. I really do like the two together. I think that's a fun look. And it also even just works with like sweaters layered over the top. So it gives it more, it just looks like a skirt. It's such a great wardrobe staple for me now. And I definitely do think I need to get more of these in my wardrobe. One thing I will just add, cause I think it's just a little bit of fun. This dress is called the Nyx dress named after Stevie Nyx. And I think it very much picks up on the Stevie Nyx vibe. I think I'm getting that for sure when I'm wearing this. And when I was sewing it just for my own amusement, I listened to quite a lot of Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nyx as I was sewing it, just to kind of, you know, get into the zone. And I like that stuff anyway. 
I will say Stevie Nicks' first album has some really good songs on it. So check it out, especially if you're making the Nicks dress. You gotta get into the zone. Listen to some Stevie Nicks. You will not be disappointed. It's really good fun and good sewing music. Next up are the Stella Joggers by Tilly and the Buttons. So this is a pattern that comes from the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book. I got this fabric at the same open day from Sew Me Sunshine where I got this fabric. And it's this really lovely marled pink color. It's a French terry, cotton French terry. What excited me about it and made me decide to go for this fabric, I knew I wanted to make some new Stella Joggers. I knew I needed more in my wardrobe and they have matching ribbing of the same fabric. So I was able to get a perfect match, which is always really satisfying. I used the ribbing at the top of the trousers and also at the bottoms down at the little cuffs. Now I didn't make this exactly as the pattern tells you to. So I have made a lot of these Stella Joggers over the years. I've also made the Hudson Pants by True Bias. There were elements I like of both of those patterns and I kind of wanted to go somewhere in between the two. I actually talked about these, both of these on my Clash of the Patterns. It was, I think the Sweatpants Showdown. I'll pop a link to it if you haven't seen it because like I said, there were things I like about both of the patterns, but I more or less stuck to the design of the Stella Joggers. There's a really nice side seam pocket, but I also decided to increase the leg a little bit because it is quite a tapered leg as the intended design. I didn't want it quite so tapered. I wanted a little bit more of a wide leg or more of a straight leg, I guess I would say. And so I just straightened the leg out. I just eyeballed it. I just went a little bit more straight on the front and the back of the leg pieces. Worked out very well for me. I just find it a little bit more comfortable just bumming around at home. And the cuff, I will say, I kept the same size, but I think it just stretched out a bit and didn't ping back as much as I would have liked. I think I was hoping for a little bit more of a tighter ankle there, but details, guys, not anything major. These are super comfortable, super functional. The other thing that I did is I added on these rows of top stitching, which are on the Hudson Pants by True Bias. They're not on these trousers or the Stella Joggers. But I feel like the Stella Joggers, whenever I've made them, the elastic tends to roll and move around and drive me a little bit crazy. I tried tacking them down at the side seams and things, but it never really does the trick. But putting these rows of top stitching down there, I think is a really nice professional finish, but also it keeps the elastic in place. So overall, really satisfied with these, really happy with these. They're essentially to replace, I've got two pairs of Stella Joggers that I made quite a few years ago now that are just wearing out. I've got one that's almost got, like it's like got, Kind of a hole in the bum basically. It's got a hole, the fabric is fraying, it looks sad and tired, and yeah, those two early ones need replacing. So I will be making another one at some point when I find the right fabric, but this one, perfect, perfect addition to my wardrobe, super comfortable for wearing around at home. The next one I'll tell you about is the Breckenridge Henley, which is a top from Love Notions. It's something that I've been having in the back of my mind because I did have, or I have had Henley tees over the years. I have one that is very loved, very worn, really needs replacing. I love a Henley tee just for that kind of comfortable, casual look. And I like wearing them at home. I like wearing them to bed. If they're cute, I'll wear them out as well. And I had seen this pattern and thought this seemed like a good option for me. What I like about Love Notions is they do have a full bust piece option. So it wouldn't need any kind of adjustments for me, which is definitely a good win in my books. I saw this fabric on the Sew Me Sunshine YouTube. It wasn't actually from the open day, but I will say it was somewhat inspired by the open day. It's this fabric, which is a waffle knit fabric. I do love a waffle knit for being really nice and cozy and warm. I think when you do have that kind of extra texture on there, it kind of traps in your body warmth, honestly. And this is almost, it's like a double layer. So the inside looks very much the same. It's like a double layer of the waffle knit and it is really definitely very warm. But one of the things is I found out at the open day that they do have some ribbing, well, they have a lot of ribbing, and some of it that matches the fabric exactly. So I thought I would just send them a little email and ask, I'm looking at this waffle knit from your YouTube video, do you have any matching ribbing for any of the colors that you have? And then I might go ahead and make a Henley out of it because I knew that would work really well. Waffle knit isn't usually super stretchy, so you definitely would need some kind of ribbing to go with it. And it's so difficult when you're ordering stuff online. So me, Sunshine, I've always had really nice, quick responses to emails, really great customer service. So I really do value that. And they were really sweet, gave me multiple options of these ones go with this waffle knit, these ones go with this waffle knit with photos so I could feel like I was making a good decision. None of them were an exact match of the color, but I think this one is 
pretty stinking good, right? Like, it's not really, it's, I think depending on the light, it's marginally darker, but it is really, really a good match. So this is the top. I'm not meaning to just hide it from you guys. This is the Henley top. If you're not familiar with the Henley, the idea is it's got these buttons, little button placket at the front, and it's just a long sleeve tee essentially. This is a faux button placket as well. So it, it you can actually function, this can open up, but you don't need the buttons to function because it's jersey, you can pull it on and off really easily. But they do put the buttons on there and then it's this kind of v-neck shape that almost makes it appear like it's somewhat unbuttoned. So you can put these extra buttons on the top. Now this is one thing I wanna mention because it really had me pause when I was sewing this up I knew that I wasn't gonna make this button placket functional, and I should give a little close up because I'm pretty impressed with that button placket. I feel like it came out really super neat. They have really good instructions of how to do this. It's quite a simple construction, but they even have a YouTube video to talk you through. So if you are stuck and not understanding the stages, then you can look at that and understand a little bit better. But when I was looking at the pattern design for this, when I was looking at the pattern envelope, they showed the buttons, they're kind of stitching them on top of the button placket. And then the extra buttons that are above, they put on this side, which match with your sewing onto the same side of the placket as it works. I'm sewing them all through the top. But if you have buttons and button holes, they should actually be on the underside. So I almost put the buttons on on this side and then I realized and kind of had to stop, double check if I was wrong thought about it, looked at the design as well of the pattern to make sure I hadn't gotten mixed up and they definitely had it wrong. I got it right. I put my buttons on the side where they should be. I don't think anyone would ever notice, but you know, we wanna have these things looking accurate even if we're not doing the proper buttonholes. And I do think that it looks really cute and I think it does give that somewhat unbuttoned look to it, which I think is really nice. I will say the button placket, I went a little bit off instructions, not in a major way, but on the inside at the bottom of the button placket, you have to put a little bit of interfacing there when you're bringing it all together. And I felt like the interfacing square, the size that they told you to cut, was still going to be really visible on the inside after you stitched it together. And I thought that just wasn't going to look very nice and neat. And so I checked the video and I saw that you really don't need it to be very big at all. And so I sized down that little interfacing square, which means when I put the placket together, you can't see the interfacing underneath because it was going to be white and just contrast and not look as nice. On the whole though, I did just follow the instructions. I feel like this came together really well. This has a really nice long cuff on the sleeve which feels extra cozy. There's a nice curved hem detail as well at the front and at the back. One thing I will say is that the Love Notions pattern, they have a normal standard bust, bust cup size option and a full bust cup size option which is for five inches or more of difference between your high and your full bust. Mine is five inches, it's not more. And so one of the things as kind of the opposite of this dress basically, they add length to the front to be able to account for the fuller bust. And because they're going for five or five inches or bigger, I think they're a little bit more generous in how much length they add on to the front. So this is a little bit longer in the front than probably suits me. I feel like it could be a little bit shorter, or it should be a little bit shorter, again, not a major thing, and mostly I'm be wearing this at home, staying nice and cozy and wearing it to bed, so I don't really care. But I feel like that is the difference, I guess, between having like generalized bust cup sizes as opposed to more specific, which some of the other pattern companies offer. Still on the whole, I am really happy with the fit that I got out of it. So I made a small with the full bust cup, graded to the waist, medium at the waist and a large at the hip. I will pop up my measurements comparing to their size chart, but in general, I will say it was exactly the size they suggested. I think it is a really good amount of ease. It's really nice and comfortable. And I could see myself making more Henley tees in my life. And I think this is just a good addition to the wardrobe. Overall, I feel like this is working for me. The fabric is really nice and warm, really nice and cozy. And now I've got a Henley tee that can replace the tattered one in my wardrobe. Next up to tell you guys about is my toaster sweater. This is the Toaster Sweater 1 by Soho 7. This is my second toaster sweater. One, I have made both toaster sweaters multiple times. Big fan of both, both Soho 7 patterns. This fabric I actually got in December of 2021. So if you watched my first Vlogmas series, you might remember having seen this fabric. I got it very much with the intention of making the toaster sweater with it. 
I have seen this fabric around quite a lot. It has this grid-like pattern on it. It is a fleece back cotton sweatshirting. So it's white and fluffy and fleecy on the inside. Super duper soft. I have to say this fabric is gorgeously soft, but it is on the lighter weight side for a sweater, for a sweatshirt. So when I got it, I did think probably I was gonna need to add a little bit more structure to this neckline. So this has like a kind of funnel neckline. I really like the design of it. The first one I made was with quite a thick fleece back sweatshirting and so it really stands up without any issue. But this one is just a little bit more drapey, is a little bit more floppy. And so I added some knit interfacing just into the neckline and I did it both sides so it folds over itself but I interfaced the whole thing put it in, it stands up, I think, just right. It's not like pinging up or anything like that, but just enough to be comfortable and not too floppy. I feel like it gives it the structure that I wanted with this neckline. This is a raglan sleeve sweatshirt. I will say it is one of the easiest and quickest sweatshirts to put together. Because it's a raglan sleeve, the sleeves go in really easily, really quickly. Because you have this neckline and you also have cuffs on the sleeves, a nice deep cuff, always a fan of a nice deep cuff. I feel like it is just extra cozy around your wrists. And there's also a cuff at the bottom. I made the whole thing on my serger, honestly, probably in about half an hour. It is just like boom, 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 and it's done. And you're like, oh, I've made myself a whole sweatshirt. They do give you the option of doing some top stitching around some of the areas. I don't bother with the top stitching. I don't feel like it particularly added to the other one when I made it. I feel like this worked out really well. The reason I paused and didn't make this last year is really just because the fabric wasn't as warm and thick and fluffy as I was hoping that it might be. And I feel like it's actually more suited to the kind of trans seasonal so autumn and spring rather than the winter that I was hoping to make it for. I really like this color and to me it's kind of like a bluey gray color. To me it feels kind of like a wintry color. It kind of reminds me of when like the sun is reflecting on the snow or the blue sky is reflecting on the snow. Not that we get snow in the UK but in Chicago where I grew up I'm very much used to having snow in the winter so it has that association with me that kind of color. But because it was not as heavy weight I thought it's not really all that wintry, so it kind of put me off. I knew I still wanted to make it, but that basically just is why it took me a year to get around to making it. I'm really glad that I did though. It is a super snuggly layer to wear in the house, but I will definitely also be wearing this layered over things more into like the springtime, like I said, even into the autumn. I feel like the size and shape of this works really well. I just make the standard size that's recommended for me. I do not size up or do any full bust adjustment because it does have a lot of built-in ease there. And I feel like it's a great layering piece. It is not that fitted, which means that you can throw it over things really well. It's really comfortable. Like I said, it is really cozy with those nice thick cuffs, but also just with that cozy neckline that's not too tight and restrictive, but just adds a little bit more warmth around the neck area. The fabric itself, I will say, I've been seeing around and I've been wanting to get it because I've seen so much of it. And it is gorgeous feeling quality, but there's one bit that kind of annoys me. And I'd be curious to know if anyone else has got the same fabric because I got it from like so amazing, but I've seen it in loads of places. The grid pattern is, I would have thought going to be on the grain, but there are also these lines and I don't know if I'll be able to show them on here. They're like little indentations, I think you can see, but they don't line up perfectly with the grid lines. And when I was looking to see where the grain line seemed to be, so how it was knitted, the indentations are actually more in keeping with the, the, the grain line and the grid itself is not. So it really does go off at points. And I decided to go along with the grid lines rather than going with those indentation lines. So I basically cut this slightly off grain so that it wouldn't look visually really bizarre. But that was kind of odd to me and it didn't seem great. It wasn't super impressive. And I don't know if I just got a bit of a funny cut of this or if that is just the way that it is. I mean, it doesn't matter. It didn't affect, you know, the stretch, the feel of it, the shape of it. I feel like it goes on and it looks well. And it didn't pull itself out of shape or anything like that. But it's more just like if you look up close, it just looks kind of off and it bugs me a little bit. Like I said, it's, it's not a big deal. Certainly wearing this. I don't think anyone really is looking that close at my garments. But just, you know, for myself, it, it bugged me a little bit that it wasn't as sort of neat looking as I feel like it should have been. 
Next up is this Marlowe Cardigan by True Bias. I really love this petrol blue color. I feel like it's looking more like a royal blue on screen, so I'll pop up some pictures of me in it with a more accurate representation of the color. This fabric is one that I did pick up at the Somi Sunshine Open Day in October. I basically, if you feel this fabric, you want to buy this fabric. So many people bought it on the open day because it is just so gorgeously soft and lovely. It has a really nice drape to it as well. They call it their soft knit fabric. I think it's like a viscose poly blend, but it's really quite soft and snuggly and definitely seemed like a perfect candidate for the Marlowe cardigan. I hadn't necessarily intended to make the Marlowe cardigan. Of course, I've been seeing it around, but it's quite oversized and slouchy and I felt like I don't really know if that would suit my style, if that would fit in with other things that are in my wardrobe. But when I found this fabric, I was like, well, this is clearly Marlowe cardigan fabric. So I think that's what I need to do with it. And I do think I was right. But the one thing that is super disappointing and annoying is that I washed, I pre-wash all my fabric. And in general, I usually do not tumble dry my me made clothes. I just put them in the washing machine and then I hang them to dry because that helps to keep them last for longer but I do like to kind of pre-shrink everything. So I usually put it on like a higher temperature wash and tumble dry just to make sure that there isn't some situation where one day somewhere down the line, I accidentally wash it with those settings and then shrink a garment to the point where it's unwearable. So I decided to just go ahead, pre-wash, pre-shrink this fabric because it was the open day and I didn't have the proper descriptions from the website. I didn't realize that you are not supposed to tumble dry this fabric. So the directions on the website tell you not to tumble dry, so that's totally my fault. Lesson learned, I need to be more cautious. But I felt like viscose poly blend should be fine, right? Apparently not. So I don't think it's very easy to tell from a distance. And I think even close up, potentially, it's not super obvious, but it wore this fabric. It basically, to me, makes it look like it's aged. I think you can see from here, and it's probably even more dramatic somewhat from the lighting, the way that it's showing. It looks all bobbly and worn, and basically it looks to me like a sweater that I've had for probably about five years. It is a sweater that I made a month ago, and I've barely worn, I would say I've barely worn, because to be honest, I've worn this thing a lot. But certainly that is not what's responsible for the worn look of this fabric. And when that happened, I was definitely a bit gutted and it was not inexpensive fabric. So it was pretty disappointing that I felt like it was kind of wasted. But then I felt like the style of the Marlowe cardigan, it is what they call like a granddad style, grandpa style cardigan. And I felt like if there was one garment in the world that was gonna suit this really worn looking sweater fabric, sweatshirt fabric, this was definitely the pattern for it. And I feel like it just looks more like something that, you know, you found in a, a thrift shop or that you had passed down from somebody. And I feel like it actually doesn't take away too much from the look of this. It's not ideal, guys. I know I'm trying to like see the bright side, but in all honesty, of all the things that I could have made with it, I feel like it's not too bad. I did try doing all these like depilling things. I have like a little comb thing and I even got one of those little like, kind of trims, like a little, I don't know, like a razor, I guess, like a little shaver that takes off, but they're not big pills. They're not like big sticking out bobbles. It's all quite flat to the fabric and it really didn't make a difference. The buttons I love, so I got them at the same time. They are Pigeon Wishing, Pigeon Wishes buttons. Again, great thing about shopping in store, you're able to know that you have really good matching buttons. They're not all the same, there's a bit of variation in the tones on there, which I really do like. There are patch pocket options on this cardigan for the longer version, so there's a long and a short version. I actually made halfway between the two, so I extended the crop version by three and a half inches because I felt like I didn't necessarily want too cropped, but I also didn't want it to be super long. The original long length version to me seemed a little bit too long. I feel like this turned out to be a really good length for me and it's actually been really comfortable and I've been layering it over so much stuff. I am really happy with how that pocket turned out with that curve there. I feel like that went in quite neatly. I did actually use Wonder Tape to tack it in place before I stitched on, which I think did help. I feel like this generally has a nice finish despite the fact that the fabric is obviously not looking its best, but I think otherwise it comes together well. This is quite oversized, which is definitely the point. Again, on this one, I sized down one size and I think that is absolutely perfect for me. I'm really happy with the fit that I have. It is 
loose, it is a bit wider. I do really like that the sleeve is quite wide. It's got a drop sleeve. I feel like that's nice that it's quite full because it makes it great for layering, especially over things like this that have like a bit more fabric on the sleeve. You can throw it over it and it fits in there and it's not pulling it up too much. Three quarter length sleeve, it doesn't pull them up as you're putting it on. So I have been throwing this over dresses and tops. I've been wearing it home, like just lounge wear because it's so soft and comfortable, because it's a really nice thick layer. I feel like this has just been an absolute go-to since I've worn it. It's one of those things that I feel like looking forward into future months and years, I'm sure this is gonna be one of my most worn makes, just considering how much I've worn it in the short period of time since I made it. The last sewing project I have to tell you about is one that I didn't actually make in January. I made it last November, but this is the first time that I've been able to share it with you guys. It's something that I made as one of the Cashmerat Club collaborators. I've talked about this on my channel before, but last year Cashmerat reached out to me, asked me if I wanted to get all VIP access to the Cashmerat Club in exchange for sewing up three of the Cashmerat Club makes and sending them photos that they could then share on launch day so that they could show how the pattern, pattern looks on different body types. They did show me what the patterns were gonna be or gave me a description of what the patterns were gonna be. And it was kind of a no-brainer, to be honest. I really like Cashmerat. I know their patterns fit me really well. And I liked the look of all the patterns that they sent me. But this one, I was supposed to make it up in November, but they ended up delaying the release. So it only came out in February. So this is why I'm only able to show it to you guys now. It is the February make for the Cashmere Club, and it is the Mercot Puffer Vest. Now, I am not someone who's ever worn vests before. Probably, like a lot of people who are going to be shopping with Cashmere I've never found that they ever fit me well. If they fit me across the high bust and the waist, they don't fit in the bust and the hip and vice versa. So I've never had a puffer vest. When I saw the design for this, I was really intrigued to see how I would like it and whether it's something that I would want to wear. It certainly seemed like a fun project. And the design of it to me very much took me back to like the 80s body warmer vibe. Though those are very bright, bold colors, usually made with like a polyester fabrics, usually often waterproof fabrics. And I thought, what if I kind of updated that a little bit and went for more of like a modern color palette in a softer fabric that would be more comfortable to wear, not necessarily needing it to be waterproof. And I actually really love the way it came out. I knew in my mind in general that I wanted to do some color blocking with it. The lines that you can see here that I've used for color blocking and the ones above and below are quilting lines that are on the pattern pieces themselves. It is not designed for color blocking, but I feel like it's such an easy one to just adapt to color blocking because you already have these grid lines on the pattern pieces to do all of the top stitching for the quilting. I just traced the pieces out, added some seam allowance to the edges of these sections so that I could then join them together. I joined together this front section and the side panel before I then treated them as one piece essentially and brought them together. The back has this really cool chevron effect. Again, this is very much me just copying what was on the design for the quilting lines, but I think it is just so effective. It works really well, and again, very much in line with the kind of 80s body warmer-esque vibe that I was going for. This came together so well. It was a really fun project to make. You actually quilt together the top fabric to the quilt batting before you add the lining to it. And that creates such a nice, neat finish. So that means that the inside, the lining, doesn't have any of those quilting lines. And also it means because there's a pocket here, there's a welt pocket, really pleased with how that came out. There's a welt pocket that's quilted on the top here so it's super cozy, you're inside that quilted lining, but you don't see the pocket bag on the inside because it's fully enclosed. So the way you put all of this together, you stitch together the body inside out, but you leave the armholes not stitched together and then you turn the whole thing right side out and then there's a binding that goes around the armhole. I feel like it is just super neat. It's definitely one of those garments. I feel like my stitching lines, I took my time. They're all really nice and neat going all the way around the edges here. The binding, I feel like is just such a beautiful, lovely, neat finish around the armhole. You don't really see it peeking through on the outside either. 
I'm so proud of the color blocking choices that I made as well. So this fabric I just love. It came from So Me Sunshine, something else I picked up on that So Me Sunshine open day because open days guys are the best. Fabric shopping in person is the best and I really do love their fabrics. So this is a washed cotton fabric. It's got this really gorgeous, I would say like a linen-like texture on it that I really do love. I knew I wanted to get some solid colors to color block, but I did also know that when you're shopping online, it's so difficult to tell what colors are gonna look like together. Even if they're from like the same brand, they won't necessarily look how I think they are gonna look together. So being able to actually look at these, I love these colors. I love how they go together. There's a warmth to the colors, which I feel like works better with my coloring. And I also saw some other options that I was really debating. I had such a hard time picking colors. In addition to these gorgeous colors, there was a like a mid gray, there was a navy blue. I feel like those are probably more the colors that I would tend to gravitate toward. But I really liked the idea of having this really fun, vibrant, bright, colorful body warmer. And I'm so glad that I got the ones that I did. I feel like they work really well. I'm so glad as well that I chose the pink at the collar, which matches the body, but also matches the lining. As far as closures, you can do buttons or snaps on this. I definitely wanted to do snaps. I feel like that's just easier to kind of layer on and off over things than fiddling with buttons. And the snaps that I went for in the end were clear. I got these on Amazon. And I will say I debated trying to get different colors, but I felt like... The clear is going to go with everything and I feel like it kind of has a cool almost like an 80s early 90s thing about it being the clear. I feel like there was a lot of transparent plastic in probably more the early 90s than in the 80s but I feel like that's a fun detail. I added a nice label. I feel like that color really pops on there. It's just a nice sewing label on there but this is honestly one of those things that because I had this vision and I did a lot to try and make it my own and it came out really exactly how I wanted it. The finish is so neat. It is one of the proudest things I have made and it is definitely, I think probably, my proudest make from 2022. Now I made a video at the beginning of the year talking about my proudest makes. I didn't mention this one because I wasn't allowed to tell you guys about it. The thing that I did say was my proudest make, I am also super proud of it. I mean, they are neck and neck. But this one probably does have the edge. I just, I really do love how it came out. As far as wearing it as well, because I haven't worn puffer vests before, because I haven't had the opportunity to wear them, I did not realize how super cozy and lovely they are to wear. I feel like I'm giving myself a little cozy quilted hug when I wear it. I thought when I would wear a body warmer, I would end up feeling really cold because my arms and my hands would be cold. I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna go outside in just a body warmer and a t-shirt, but wearing this over like a long sleeve tee, it just gives you that little extra snuggliness. And this is not super bulky. So the quilt batting that I use, it's like a recycled polyester batting. I did actually double it up because I want it to be reasonably thick and warm. But I can actually wear this under my coat, under my Kelly Anorak. It layers under there absolutely fine and gives me a little bit of an extra layer if I feel like I need it as well. But this is one that in the house, out of the house, I have really enjoyed wearing it. And I would love to make one in more like a solid color. I've seen some with like a Sherpa fleece lining on the inside, which looks so nice. So I do think I will be re revisiting this pattern at some point. And I'm so glad that I was able to make this one and share it with you guys finally after all this time. So now I have a couple of knitting makes to talk about before I get into my works in progress. So the first thing I wanna show you guys is I finished my second sock. So I had actually talked about this first sock. Oh, I don't know which one's the first, but one of these I'd finished already back in December and I talked about it and I got the second one knitted up in January. This yarn I absolutely love. So it's really all about the yarn. The socks are the I'm So Basic sock by Summerlee Design. I wanted a super simple basic sock and I've made these socks before. I know they work well for me, but I wanted the yarn to be able to sing and I feel like it really does with these socks. So this is a really lovely sock yarn from Made by Penguins. It's 85% merino, 15% nylon. It knits up really well. It is really nice and soft. It has a really lovely sponginess to it when you're knitting. So it's a really pleasant yarn to knit with. 
I think they are really fun. You know, you can look at the front, you can look at the back, and they look different because you had that variation of the color there. The color is called lipstick, which I think suits it so well. But these are really fun to wear. I really do love the color. It's really nice and bold and vibrant. I do tend to really only wear my hand knitted socks at home just because I don't want them to wear out too quickly. But they're really, really lovely. I'm so happy with the way they came out. I knitted a ton of tiny tree socks, so little mini socks over Christmas to hang on the Christmas tree. And honestly, guys, going through the process of making the socks in a mini version made me so much quicker with the processes and helped me to like get those things in my head much more. So when I came around to knitting the second sock of these, it came together so much faster than the first one. And I feel like I've got more of a kind of muscle memory now for a lot of sock knitting. So I will be making more tiny tree socks. I will be making more I'm So Basic socks. Really love the pattern, really recommend it for a beginner knitting pattern as well because there are really great tutorial steps to go through each of the stages if you're not familiar with it. I'll put a link down below to the pattern so you can check it out if you are interested. I'll put a link down below to all the patterns that I talk about. But these are ones that are definitely a go-to and I know I'll be making more of these. They're just a good basic one that I'll be making again and again. And then the other knitting project I want to talk about is almost more of like a reworking of an old project. I made the Susie sweater by Along Avec Anna in February of 2021, so two years ago now. And I made it with a color fade, so that was not part of the design. I'd seen some patterns with a fade, and I'd made this sweater before, and I thought, well, why don't I just have a go and see what I can do with it? So I used three different yarns that I held together with one that was throughout. I'll put up on the screen what the yarns are because guys, I don't have yarn names in my head as easily as I do with fabrics. This yarn I know that I got from Loop London. I got all the colors together so that I knew that the fade or well, the colors would work well for the fade or in my mind they would. I do think the fade turned out really cool. I think it worked really well. The downside of this pattern when I made it, the main thing was that I had sized up from the previous version. I made it before and it was just a little bit small. So I size up to get a better fit in the body, but it also sized up the neckline. And I feel like when I made this, I knew straight away and I said that I felt like the neckline was a little bit too low at the front, a little bit too wide at the neck and the shoulders where I would have normally have wanted it to sit. The main thing is that I want to have the option of layering under sweaters and I felt like it looked really odd layered under things with the width that it was. Add to that, I have noticed, I have found, I am actually very sensitive to yarn, particularly around this neckline area, around my wrists, and I do find a lot of yarn to be very scratchy and uncomfortable. They cause redness, irritation, and this sweater unfortunately was one of those. So if I were to wear it on its own, it was really scratchy and unpleasant and I just couldn't wear it. If I wanted to wear something underneath, like a top or a turtleneck, it was just such an odd size. It just looked really peculiar. So I just wasn't wearing it. I'd made it two years ago and I could probably count on one hand the amount of times that I'd worn it, which is just such a shame with the cost of yarn, the time spent knitting something, how proud I was of the design. I just felt like I need to do something to try and breathe new life into this sweater. So there were two main things that I did. The first one is the main one, is I decided to try and pick up stitches along the neckline. So this is knitted top down, but I picked up stitches along the neckline to try and extend it upward. I would say that I tried my best to pick up every single stitch to try and match the ribbing, but I clearly didn't get that quite right. The ribbing does not exactly match up. I also then, as I was knitting it, I think because it didn't particularly match, I had only intended to add maybe an inch, but I decided to add quite a bit more just so that I felt like it would look more intentional of a design, that there was that little extra bit added on. So I would say that, yes, you can tell that there's a break there and that there's a new section added on, but I think it looks like it's intended to be that way. The other thing is because I wanted it to narrow as it went up the neckline, I decided to do decreases on each side, but I didn't want it to go up too quickly. And because I don't really know what I'm doing with knitting that well, I'm kind of winging it. I ended up doing a decrease on each side, but they are in opposite directions. So I did like a right leaning and a left leaning decrease, 
which is probably a bit strange and probably not what you're supposed to do. But as far as I'm concerned, I feel like it worked and it comes up the way that I wanted it and not more than I wanted it to. So I'm calling it a win. I, I think it looks much more wearable to me as it is now than how it was before. And also when I wear things under, I feel like it looks like a really good neckline size for layering. So I'm able to wear it over long sleeve shirts, over turtleneck, and I think it looks fab either way. The other thing I did to see if I could just soften this yarn a little bit more, I had washed in wool light, I'd washed and blocked it in wool light, but I then also, next time I washed it in wool light, I used hair conditioner on it. So I conditioned it, rinsed the conditioner off because I'd heard that as a tip, as a way to soften your yarn. And it worked, guys. I wouldn't say it's like the softest yarn, but I now notice when I'm wearing this, if the sleeves get a little bit onto the edge of my wrist as I'm wearing over something, it's okay. I think this area is maybe a little more sensitive, so I probably wouldn't wear it just on its own, but I don't need to now because I've extended it to the point where I can wear something under it. And it's a really nice warm layer. It is really super cool to wear. I'm so happy that I can actually wear this sweater now. I was so proud of it when I made it and I was so sad when I realized that I wasn't reaching for it. And so, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of an unusual adjustment probably to have made. I think it worked and I now have a wearable garment, so it's a win for me. Now, as far as my works in progress in January, one thing I did after I made my first Marlowe cardigan is I pretty swiftly cut out a second. I ordered fabric to make another Marlowe cardigan. I made, made the crop version for the second one, which I will show you in my February makes video, which hopefully will be coming out a little bit quicker than this one did. But I knew that I loved that pattern, cut out another one. Can't show you the pieces cut out because it's now a cardigan that I'll show you soon. But I did also cut out a dress that I haven't even managed to touch yet. So this is the Maya Sotis dress by Deer and Doe. I had plans at the beginning of the winter season to make a corduroy version. So this is a really gorgeous petrol stretch needle cord that I got from So Me Sunshine again at the open day. So the last thing I got from the open day, I got a bumper load of stuff and I have just been working through all of it. It is honestly just so much better when you can buy fabric in person. Those of you who do it all the time and it's normal for you, you get it. But I feel like I don't necessarily have a lot of fabric shops around me that I can go to that have a lot of the things that I want. So Me Sunshine has most of the things that I like, but they don't usually have open shop you can go into. So I'm gonna stop talking about them, honestly. Again, no affiliation. I just absolutely love their fabric shop. But this is gonna be a Maya Sotis dress by Deer and Doe. I have cut it out. I have also cut out long sleeves. So I'm doing it hacked to be longer and I'm hacking it to have longer sleeves. So I stole the sleeves from the Birdie Button-Up blouse by Pattern Scout. I have made that blouse before. I've also made a dress version. I really do like that dress and the blouse, but I really wanted to try and take the Maya Sodas and make that into more of a wintry wear or like a colder weather wear option. So this one I will be getting sewn up hopefully soon. Didn't manage to get to it in February because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was mostly sick in February and I'm still not 100% where I was before with my energy levels with COVID. I'm getting there guys and it's been nice to be able to do a bit more sewing, to be able to do some more vlogging. I am miles behind on all the videos that I really wanna put out with you guys. I have so many ideas of things that I wanna make as far as videos, but I don't always have the time or the energy to get around to it. But just know that there's tons of really fun content coming up. I am really excited that I'm going to be one of the people taking part in the So Frugal Challenge this year for 2023. I will be having a video coming out for that in mid-March, but like I said, tons of other videos coming out to you guys soon. Please let me know if there were any of the makes that I made this month that stood out to you as something that you'd be excited to try, something that you have tried, or something that you think just really suits me really well. It's always nice to hear from you guys anything that stood out to you, because I only have my own opinion to go by, which is probably the most important opinion, but it's fun to get that feedback from you guys as well. I know this was an absolute bumper of a video. I knew there was so much stuff to share with you guys, but I knew there was also tons of really awesome makes in January, and I'm so glad that I was finally able to share them with you. Please do give me a like if you liked my video, if you enjoyed seeing all the things that I made. Please do make sure you're subscribed down below if you want to see future makes, and I will be seeing you guys very soon. Bye!